and welcome back now today we're going to be looking at my world clock project that you're seeing there with the general time plus three time zones which are of interest to me so uh, oh yes and a web interface so what's all this project about well i've got a strip a 0.9 meter strip of led matrix you know the eight by eight little modules that you can get um, it's a 0.9 meter strip mounted on a bit of wood at the minute because i always thought it would be handy perhaps to see i don't know my youtube views or the weather or something and i've had it now for oh, a good three years well i've been here two years and it hasn't been used plus however long it was in the other place and it never got used i don't know why but suddenly i have a real project for it a real need what i'm going to do is display the the time and date but also the day of the week, because when you're working from home, as I am, every day is pretty much like another day. I mean, you think, you know, I've gone through entire days thinking it was a Thursday and it was a Saturday or whatever. Swap those days around as you feel fit, because, you know, there's nothing to differentiate the two days, really. So I've got the, the time of day, the day of the week and the three time zones, one for the UK, obviously, because I live here, one for China. So I don't start sending WhatsApp messages to my contacts in China at, you know, 11, 12 o'clock at night, which I've done before. Oops. And Oz, because my daughter lives in Australia and it's nice to know what time it is there. And they keep changing their times, uh, different times to us. You know, we have daylight savings coming in, but they have it at different times. So it's always useful to know what time of the day it is over there as well. So that's where the project is at the minute. Um, oh yes, I do have a web interface on my phone so I can put on some reminders, up to five reminders on that. It, it looks good and I thought at last I'm finally using up that long strip that I've protected for so long. Okay, let's see how I did then. I want to give a big shout out to PCB Way, PCB prototype the easy way. Now we're all well aware of the $5 for 10 pieces PCB, but I've got some real practical examples that I've ordered recently. Let's have a look at those. So here we have a very small double-sided panelized board that enables me to create a tiny little display unit. Look at that, how cool is that? And at the other end, look at this pond controller. Mains voltage, absolutely wonderful. That looks pretty cool too, doesn't it? And that's been running for some time now. Yep, PCB Way has excellence in their PCB department, but that's not all they do. Look at this. Just look at their products and capabilities. Apart from printed circuit boards of all types, they do PCB assembly, double-sided, through hole, surface mount, you name it, which means you can design a prototype for yourself or your company and have it assembled by PCB Way for the cost of the shipping. And if you want some 3D printing done, these are the people to do it for you as well. PCB Way. Why don't you try them out now? So what you're seeing here is the sort of final version of the project before it gets put into the case. Um, there's the PCB from PCB Way, the processor, various connections. That's just an FTDI type USB to serial converter. So I can see what's happening rather than using a USB cable. That's a rotary encoder. That's a PIR so that it can detect whether there's movement around here. Uh, and if not, after five minutes, it switches the display that you can just see on your picture. So this one here, this display, it switches it off to save power. Well, in this day and age, you know. OK, right. So that's all working. Um, now, that's all got to fit somehow into the case that I've made for it. Hmm. And this is the case for the long strip, 0.9 metres it is. Um, there's the PIR. This is obviously a separate one to the one I just showed you at the top there. Um, here's the rotary encoder for the, vo um, not volume, of course it isn't, it's the uh, brightness, yeah. Um, yeah, the um, the knob on that, I don't know if you can see it, there we are, that, that knob, um, 3D printed. What's that? Yeah, okay, time to come clean. I have now got a 3D printer. I've only used it about this much. But it's, it's done pretty well, actually, I must admit, for the tiny things that I've used it for. Now, that, um, that uh, knob on here, the reason I created my own was because I just could not find one that would match the profile that I needed on here. So I thought, well, can I do it? Can I just make one really easily? More about that in a little minute when we're back onto the, uh, the workbench. What else can I tell you about this? Oh yes, on the front here there's got to be this thing to, um, to sort of just finish that off. I haven't actually decided, would you believe, how, how to secure this yet. I was going to use sort of magnets at one stage. 
but now I'm thinking, mm, I don't know, just a couple of screws either side, it's just not that critical. The other thing is, what do I do with this wood? I was originally going to paint it black, the whole thing, so that the acrylic, which is what this is, with its protective cover on, which is why you can't see it's really red, apart from that very thin strip there, uh, that goes on there. Um, and with it being black, I thought that might be rather nice. The trouble is, nothing else in my workshop is black. As you can see around here, everything else is wood colour, isn't it? So I've come to the conclusion, really, I need to, well, basically stain this pretty much either this colour or that colour just to make it blend in which I haven't got around to doing yet so I will do that before I start putting too much in here there'll be links in the video down below where I've got the acrylic cut to size we'll talk a little bit more about my 3d printing prowess <coughs> try not to snigger please it's rude yeah the actual ESP32 that you just saw up on the, the shelf up there that goes in here there is a, a minor problem that we'll also have a little chat about. Right, OK, back to the workbench. Right, some very quick uh, explanations then of why I chose a certain design route. OK, first of all, uh, this little device, which we covered in a past video, this is all about um, debouncing switches and particularly rotary encoders. This is a Bourne's one, by the way. And... Uh, this is a how many gates? I don't know. Anyway, this is a, a debouncer Schmidt trigger type chip and it works really well. I mean, I'm really pleased with the results of it. And I intended to use this in that design, except that when I actually came to put it all in, I found that I had to put it in that way up, which was accounted for, but I forgot that the actual um, lid had to go a bit lower. So in fact, it was too big. So I thought, what do I do? Do I do I redesign the board? No, I mean, come on, it's ridiculous, isn't it? So basically, I've just used the rotary encoder now without all this hardware debouncing, and I've done the debouncing in circuit. Anyway, so that's why I'm not using that, and that's annoying, really, because that was obviously waiting to be used, wasn't it? Um, I'm using that large PIR rather than this little tiny thing. Uh, why, you say? Well, basically because I've got it. That large one, in fact, I've got quite a few of those big ones. Um, they're just sitting around in a box and they're so large now, you just think, why would we use those in preference a little tiny one? Well, in fact, there are a couple of reasons. One is there are two sensitivity adjustments on it for both uh, the period that it stays on for before it switches off again and detects another movement. And you can have the sensitivity to um, well to movement basically you know far or near so that gives you that this this doesn't this one's quite sensitive though and i've got one on my smart heater controller down there on the wall and that seems to work quite okay now the one on the wall down there and that box had to be small but here i could make room for that large one so i thought well let's just use one up get rid of it basically because it's basically obsolete technology if i was selling them i'd now be selling selling them at you know half price just to get rid of them so that's why i didn't use this but originally i did think about it um okay uh, 3d printed knob yep okay as you can see i've got a prusa there we are i'll show you a little video of the thing printing um now i printed two or three versions of it because um, it wasn't 100%. Uh, let me have a look. First of all, I printed it without the skirt bit on the bottom, so it was too short. So then I added the skirt, but printed it, come back, that way, if you like, off the print bed. So like that. Totally wrong, because obviously there's, there's a hollow in there, isn't there? What's that base that you can see there going to be sitting on? Well, the answer was some support structures which were moderately difficult to get out. I mean, they, they got they, they could be removed, but it wasn't ideal. And of course, funnily enough, I was just lying in bed at two o'clock in the morning thinking, you idiot bacon, you've done all that work and you forgot the fundamental lesson. You print it that way instead, don't you? So that sits on the bed and it prints it that way up and that way you don't need any extra support structures. So that's what I did. Um, this one was, what was wrong with this one? Oh no, that was the one. Whoop. That was the one with the support structures inside. This one 
it started to print it look now this this side here goes on the print bed and yet it's it's not right is it There's something funny about it and even as it was doing it i sort of thought hang on what is that it just didn't work so i printed it again having checked the design and without making any difference to the actual file or anything else i just said have another go let's have a look and it printed it perfectly so what was going on here i don't know it might be because i'm printing with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle rather than 0.4 um, I've switched back now to 0.4 actually um, and yeah I've never had another minute's trouble so that was that that was a little cube that you're supposed to print this was also a 0.6 which is why it's got all those little holes in it because I did it speed and you're supposed to print this and then measure it and whatever, whatever okay that's pretty much the design decisions that I made then when I was doing all this so I guess the next thing is to see the finished product Okay, here we are just a few moments later. I say moments, that's Arduino moments. Okay, so it's about a month after I last recorded anything to do with this project. I know, where does the time go? So I've put it inside the box now, wired up the PIR at, at um, this end that you can't actually see. Here we are. Um, I've got to secure this in here. It's a nice, very nice snug fit, I've got to say. I then install the actual modules this end. So, so far, so good. But you know what it's like. You know, I don't want to get too much actually installed, switch it on, and then it doesn't work. And you've got to take every single bit out again. So I'm going to test it as I go, which should be okay. Right, I've fitted the top piece of acrylic on. I realise I'm a bit hunched up because the camera angle is a bit funny. Anyway, I've fitted the top acrylic on. I really like the 3D effect. I don't think you can get this on the screen. Um, particularly well but because the the matrix is probably I don't know a good centimeter perhaps even two centimeters below the surface of this red acrylic it gives it a sort of a 3d look well well I suppose it is 3d when you think about it isn't it? it's not a 3d look it really is 3d but it works very well um, and I can see looking at my monitor now what you're seeing um, yeah it's it's great the only fly in the ointment now then is getting this this end piece somehow secured in here just to sort of finish it off and then it'd be done uh, well and then hanging it up but hanging it up is as i say like a, a bit like a picture frame isn't it that's not going to be too difficult i think it's a pretty good result now just before i shoot off um, obviously we haven't discussed the web interface to this it's the same sort of web interface that i use for my pond controller and stuff like that but we're going to be talking much more about that when we talk about um, html pages for the esp32 parts 3 possibly parts four which is more designed with security in mind but yeah we're going to get a proper thing all up and running and i'll show you briefly how all that hangs together it's not difficult especially if you look at parts one and two first do them in the right order otherwise it'll all be a bit you know up in the air and that sort of thing putting a message up on that bar up there is is pretty simple really to be quite honest so yeah we can do all that okay right I, I think we're probably about done now aren't we with this project and just to prove the point there's a message don't forget to leave a comment down below yes okay and give me a like if you found this entertaining or edutaining and hey. subscribe and tick the bell yeah you got it there we are easy yeah okay i think we're done here see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.